Hello, good people of the internet. I am back with another video on the never-ending work in progress that is my photography website built using the WordPress theme Generate Press and Generate Blocks. And I'm taking you along for the ride as I explain everything I'm doing. Hopefully there's something to be learned for you too. If you have visited my website so far, you will have seen the absolute state it is in. The galleries, which I documented in a previous video, are fine, nothing to complain there. What definitely isn't fine is the first thing you see when visiting my site, the homepage. In an attempt to make my galleries a little bit more enticing, I will be creating not one, not two, but more than two homepages for you to learn from. Let's get stuck in. Wait, before we get stuck in, there is one caveat. If you want to do what I am about to show you, you will need to spend some cash. I will be using functions from Generate Blocks that are only available in the Pro version. The same goes for Generate Press. As you might have guessed already, I have an affiliate link for Generate Blocks and Generate Press in the description alongside a few others. It costs you nothing to use it, but I do get a little Dankeschön from the developer if you make a purchase. The small income made from those links certainly helps this channel survive. If you are still holding off or already bought everything I am about to mention in this guide, I do have a Patreon and you are of course always welcome to subscribe and help this channel grow. Thank you. If you have been diligently watching my guides on how I built, and I'm still building this site, you will know that the content on my pages has no margin or padding. That was needed for my galleries to look like the way I wanted them to look. But now that I'm building a homepage, I don't want the elements such as the page title and introductory text to stick to the sides of the site. Obviously, I can't change the layout settings in the customizer because that would mess up my galleries. But what I can do is add a new global style to generate blocks and use that instead. I'm partially showing you this so you know how to use them. Global styles let you define a style for, let's say, a container. You can then apply that style to any containers you insert on pages, posts, or generate press elements. They not only help you keep pages uniform, but also reduce the amount of code your site needs to load. It's a win-win situation. Using global styles, you can go back and edit it, and any changes will be applied to all generate blocks using it. The container I'm going to be creating is the one where content of my pages will be placed into. I'll give it a fitting name and check the padding. As I can't really judge what this global style looks like once I've published a page that uses it, I'll just leave it set to the default values. To be able to design our homepage, we will obviously need a page to start off with. So that is what I am going to create now. Into this page, I will add a container and assign the global style I've just created. Next, I will quickly add the site's title as an H1 and disable the title I've given this page from being shown. To set this page as my homepage, I will enter the reading settings and set it as such. I can now visit my site and I will see the page I've just created. And I can already see the first problem. I definitely need to add a margin to the top and bottom of my container. I'm not going to add that margin by editing the page, but instead to the global style. Once I've done so, you can see that the container will automatically be adjusted. If you didn't understand my explanation of Generate Blocks global styles earlier, that is basically what I was trying to describe. If I had multiple pages using this container with this global style, I would only have to make one edit to the global style and not edit the container on every page. This feature can come in really handy once your site starts growing because you won't have to individually style each page. With the basics done, I can get back to the home page because it still looks like something the doc brought in. Let's say you wanted a home page containing just text, then you would simply add the text to the container. But this is a photography type site text won't do. In this first example, I will overlay the site's name and a few social icons over one of my personal photos. To accomplish that, I will 
perhaps ironically, remove the global style again. I did tell you that I wanted to explain their function. I never said that I'll be using them. In this case, I'm removing it because I want the photo to go from the edge to the edge. So we don't need any margin whatsoever. If I had multiple pages which used a container with this style, I would obviously turn that into a global style. Enough of that, let us continue. I will add one of my photos in the container's background settings that allows us to display other blocks over the image. The photo I've picked is black and white because I want there to be a decent amount of contrast between the background and the text. That is definitely something you want to consider when overlaying text on an image. As a proponent of simple websites, I want this photo to basically be a full screen photo. What I mean by that is that I wanted to take up the space from right beneath the navigation menu to the bottom of the visitor screen and there should be no scroll bar, no matter what size the visitor screen is. The first step is to set the minimum height of the container to 100% of the visitor's viewport height. That's what the VH stands for. While I'm adjusting the settings, I am also going to add some padding to bring the text down a bit. And I will give that text a slight shadow to increase its contrast. After all, the background behind it is more greyish and more contrast never hurts. If I visit the page now, you will see that the text is where we want it to be. But you might have also noticed a slight annoyance. The scroll bar. Why is that Liam? Thank you for asking. It is the way it is because I set the photo to be 100% of the visitor's viewport's height, but that doesn't include the navigation menu or the footer. What we've got here is a 100% photo plus the navigation above it and the footer below it. I will start the remedy by removing the footer. It can be disabled in the page's settings. You will need to enable this panel in the Generate Press options. As I warned you, it is only available in Generate Press Premium. Affiliate link down below. Removing the footer is only half the solution. I need to tackle the navigation next. We will do that by adding not a block element, as I do for just about everything else, but a header element instead. In this header element, we will set the header to merge with the content on desktop browsers. I'm only including desktops because I am using a slide out navigation on mobiles. In the settings, the color of the header and navigation can be set to any color of your liking. In accordance with the background photo, I'm going with black on white. If we take a look at the homepage now, you will see that the scroll bars have disappeared. Hooray! There's one more adjustment to make and that is to make the social icons I created in the last video reappear. Currently, they are white and thus won't show against the white background. I could create a second block element and add a black version of the icons only to the home page, but I'd rather have them below the title, so I'm going to exclude them from the home page in my social links block element. After adding them to the page and making a few adjustments, I'm already quite pleased with the look. I might have to change the icons later because I don't think the current style I have looks quite right. But apart from that, I think this could very well become my homepage. I could end things here, but I really want this video to be educational and not just a way of allowing you to copy me. Don't worry, I have a plan. I will show you how to copy others. Truth be told, there's only so much you can do and once you start researching photography portfolio websites, you will come to that realization too. By copying what is already out there, you will get to know the generate blocks and with enough experience, you will be able to recreate any design you might want. The first design is one I've seen on many sites. It basically divides the content into three columns with a logo or a title along with a navigation menu on the left and two images in the other two thirds. This design is straightforward to achieve with the only inconvenience being that WordPress doesn't have a navigation block yet. Apparently it is coming. Meanwhile, what we are going to do is add a grid with three columns. I'm going to manually add the navigation to the leftmost column using individual headline blocks. Above them, I will put the title of my site. With a bit of formatting, I've got it looking the way I want it to. Next, it is time to set the other two containers to 100% of the visitor viewport height and add some backgrounds to them. If you're not happy with the distribution of your containers, the generate blocks grid does allow you to set the width to any percentage. 
With equal thirds, the images were just a bit too narrow for my liking, so I switched to a 20-40-40 split. The last step is to disable the header in the pages setting because we are of course replacing it with the left column. Another adjustment you could make to this design is to add a white border around the images using the container settings. What I've done here is just to show you what is possible. If you were going to copy this design, you would most likely add a few more details here or there. For example, you might want to place your social icons in the left column too. The next site that will be inspiring us is one from a very well known photography YouTuber, Peter McKinnon. His site uses Squarespace, which is fine, but I'm about to show you how you can achieve the same award-winning design using Generate Blocks. The design will, just as the last one did, require a Generate Blocks grid. Instead of three, it will only have two columns and there will be no gap between them. I will add a background to the right column and once again set it to be 100% to the visitor's viewport height. In the left column, I will add my site's title and assign an icon. To match Peter McKinnon's white and black design, I will enter the left container settings and set the background to be black and the text to white. The reason I'm adjusting this in the container and not in the headline is because this way it'll be applied to all blocks within the container. Unless you specifically set the color to something else, for example in a headline block. While I'm in the container settings, I will also configure the padding to somewhat match the original. Now it's basically a matter of adding the other text elements and once again making sure all the paddings look good. With that out of the way, I can start adding buttons, which will link to my individual galleries. In this case, I'm once again emulating what is seen on Peter McKinnon's website. These are so-called ghost buttons because their background is the same as the background of the container, but the border is visible. Finally, I will make it so that the button's background turns white and the text turns black when a visitor hovers over it. And with that, this layout is more or less complete. The the final website we will be taking a look at is from the photographer Sasha Kramer. I'm going to be honest here, I don't like this site. The hero image and the menu you see on the homepage is fine, but once you start scrolling there are just too many animations. The hero image itself is also animated and that is not something I am going to replicate. Not just because it is not yet possible with generate blocks, but I also don't like the way it looks. Let's ignore that and take another look at the hero and the menu. The menu is towards the top, but above it is the photographer's name and some social links in the form of icons. We will start this page by once again adding a container and setting it to be 100% of the visitor's viewport height. To that container, I'm going to add a background image and in that container, I will place a grid. I did start off with a 25-50-25 grid, but later went back and changed them all to take up a third of the width. I also added a bit of a shadow to my title because with the grey background there once again wasn't enough contrast. To the left and to the right container I added a border to the, both the bottom and the top and you will want to make sure that the container's content is vertically center aligned. That way no matter how tall your title or logo is, the icons will always be bang on center. With the grid complete I added a menu using generate blocks buttons and made sure they had no background and were evenly spaced. And just like that I've copied yet another photographer's website design. With this video I want to avoid motivating you to copy someone else's design, but it is good to know all the features generate blocks offers and by replicating someone else's work you might just be able to modify it exactly to your liking. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this video or learned something from it and if you did why not hit the like button to show your appreciation. If you didn't enjoy this video I suggest you hit the dislike button twice to make it extra impactful. I've been Liam Alexander Coleman and this has been me talking far too long. You have not been Liam Alexander Coleman, but I will see you in the next one. Bye!